Hey guys. Hope that wasn't too creepy, but I am back and better than ever. Also, I got a haircut from the last video I did. And I wanted to show you guys because I really love it. It's like layers. And I kind of got curtain bangs, but I don't really want to talk about them because I don't know how to style them. <laughs> so we will disregard those. I know that I mentioned a trim is needed, but not super often. When I say a trim, I literally mean half an inch or less because a lot of people um, like freak out when their hair is like feeling like crusty, dry, whatever. And they're like, oh my gosh, I need to cut like more and that'll fix it more. But the truth is like, just trust me on this one. Next trim you go, do not cut more than half an inch and then let me know if that helps. Because every time I'm just like, dude, I need a, I need a full chop, but all I really need is literally half an inch. And that's what I've learned and that um, helped me retain my length. Another thing I didn't talk about last time, and these are actually kind of numbered that this time. So the trim is number one. Number two is to sleep in protective styles at night. I know I mentioned a silk bonnet and a silk pillowcase and everything, but at the same time, I usually do super loose buns or like twists or um, braids. The leech is damaging to your hair no matter what. Even now, when I take such great care of my hair, like the parts that were bleached are just like, I could see like when I brush, those are the parts that are falling out. When I look at it, those are the parts that have the split ends that's what tingles the most like even this haircut i told her to just like cut into the blonde like with the layers and she was like it's gonna look kind of crazy because you got partial highlight and she did it and like my hair is just so much less tangly because that most of the damage part is gone now i know some of y'all girlies are going to continue bleaching your hair but don't say i didn't warn you number four the rule of thumb that you should follow to get healthy hair is to go at least three days in between every single wash and three days between any type of heat on your hair and honestly i like heat i think heat is fine i'm just gonna teach you guys how to use it correctly so you want to go longer between washes because the whole process of washing your hair and drying it and all that styling is super traumatic to your hair what is ruining your hair is those daily touch-ups like you style your hair like for example i just did my hair and then tomorrow i'm gonna wake up because i didn't sleep in my protective style not me but some people <laughs> And I'm gonna be like, oh my gosh, well, I need to whatever, do the front pieces again and again. And then like, what happens is this heat damage spiral. Basically, you're styling your hair with heat every single day because you want it to look good. And then you're realizing, oh my gosh, it doesn't look good unless I do heat. And so like, it's just like a constant cycle where like you have to do heat to make it look good. But then also if you don't, it doesn't look good. So it's just like, you have to keep using more heat and you keep damaging your hair more and you have to keep using more and more. So literally rule of thumb every three days. Don't even, don't even think about it. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Okay, so number five is do not be alarmed about everything you hear about how much hair loss is normal because it'll it's going to be different for every single person. Like if you have so much more hair than someone, you're probably gonna lose more hair than someone with less hair than you. And if it's been the same your whole, like your whole life, it's fine. Just like but watch on it if there's like a crazy amount. There was this study that showed that we have like a shedding phase in the fall. So like if you're losing a little bit more hair, then like don't be alarmed. It's normal. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure our lashes and eyebrows go through the same phases. Another funny story about that is that I had mono last year, like in the beginning, in the spring, and like months, months later, I start like losing my hair like crazy. Like every time I touched my hair, it was just like flying away from me when I was walking and I was like oh my gosh like I'm literally going bald I was freaking out and then I've like researched it and a lot of the times when you have like really crazy like sicknesses like that where like I was sick for like three months so it's like when you have that your body so traumatized that like that hair didn't get the nutrients and stuff in that time so it just starts falling out later and it happened a lot with people who had COVID and stuff don't be alarmed if that happens you're probably not going bald also now after like my entire shower routine I literally only lose like 10 hairs at most and that just shows like if you're gentle a lot of the times it's not just natural hair loss you're literally pulling the hair out of your head with brushing and everything and another um tip with that is if you're brushing your hair wet which that was like a no no but now i'm like it's fine whatever if you do it carefully it's fine but use a brush with flexible bristles when you're doing this like you know those really hard wide tooth combs like they have no flex so when you're brushing through it just snags and rips through a tangle but a wet brush it's like flexible so if it catches on a tangle it just like bring you know and it just like goes right through it so our hair has hydrogen bonds which are reset by water or by heat which literally just means like when you put water in your hair your hair goes back to its natural state the only way to change your hair shape is to manually do it which is like why heatless styles work like you get your hair slightly damp and then you keep it in a position and then it dries in that position or to literally like use such high heat that those hydrogen bonds are broken into that shape or into straight or curl whatever one way that people damage hair is like if they're straining or curling it like one piece will be weird so they keep going over that piece like damn 
imaging the heck out of it with heat. I literally will like take water on my fingers, get that piece of hair or like a spray bottle, blow dry it and then curl it or straighten it. And it'll just be like less damage and it's that piece of hair is gonna look better than being like all wonky from the rest of places. Number eight, definitely skipped that number. <laughs> heat protection is important. And it's like, oh my gosh, she's making me buy another product. <laughs> if you're straightening or curling your hair, so if your hair is dry, use a spray thermal heat protector because it's like, like it's meant for that higher heat. And also when you use these products, it gives your hair a hold. So like your style will last longer and all that. And if your style lasts longer, then you end up not doing as many touch-ups, which is good for your hair in the long run. Okay, so number 10 is to be so, so weary of listening to people with great hair genetics that had great hair their whole life. I know I said I have good hair genetics in my last video, but also keep note that I went through like three years of terrible hair. Like my hair would not grow. It was so crunchy and disgusting. And I literally spent like hours on YouTube, every forum, Reddit, all that. And like, I figured out what works for hair and what doesn't. So even though I have good hair genetics, I feel like I know a bit. I don't know. These people with good hair genetics, literally they'll use painting. They could use like dish soap and their hair just like looks great. So just don't take advice from them. Like if your routine ain't broke, don't fix it. Don't like how to be changing all these things just because I said it's right or someone else does. Like if your hair looks good, then it's fine. But I know that a lot of people who watch these videos it's kind of like okay your hair needs help <laughs> number 11 is a random tip you know how i spoke about the hydrogen bonds earlier that water and heat is the what can break that so when you're in the shower like i only wash my hair twice a week ish when i take showers like after the gym just a body shower i used to just like put my hair up blah 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 and go in there but all that steam and like the water is breaking the hydrogen bonds and like your style won't last as long you get frizzy and like my hair would just get dirty so now i take like one of those you know those little turban towels and I like put all my hair in there super tight and then I put like a shower cap and like a headband over the shower cap so like nothing can leak in there. My style lasts so much longer because I'm not letting like my hair get randomly frizzy during the week when it's still clean and fine. Number 12, and I brought my handy dandy tool to show you guys. This is actually what I used to style my hair today. It's just a hot brush, not a blow dry brush. So when you're using those blow dry brushes or this kind of brush, my rule is, not my rule, this is what hairstylists say. Don't just like go, see how I'm like going over the top? You could go over the top a million shoot I should not have done that <laughs> don't just go over the top a million times do the same thing over the top because what's happening is you're making the top of that section super hot and damaging it while the bottom section like the bottom of it is not getting as much of the heat spread throughout so i do the top and then i also do it from the bottom same thing you know so this like evenly distributes the heat and like makes your style last longer and doesn't damage the hair as much yeah guys so i'm editing and i forgot to say something basically do not use your blow dry brush your revlon your shark dyson whatever do do not use it on dry hair like ever make that your rule of thumb the brush gets way too way too hot and water is literally the only buffer between like you and your hair literally crumbling off so don't use it when dry um number 13 is when you blow dry your hair focus on the inside and like under because gravity is gonna be pulling the water in your hair just like inside it's not gonna that's why like your bangs and stuff get dry faster if you're blow drying your hair and your hair is getting hot to the touch just move on to the next section like the the, the only buffer you have right now is the water in your hair that's like keeping the hair from getting too hot and damaged so focus on the wet parts and don't like keep just doing on top like go in there you know the truth of the matter of this whole hair care thing is that all you need is time most hair grows six inches in a year which is like literally so much like six inches it's gonna be crazy next year <laughs> so six inches is a lot and if it's not growing six inches a year literally watch my videos because you've probably been doing something wrong why this is happening is because people have the same approach to working out as they do to hair as they do to like literally almost everything in life where people have this mindset of like i'm going on vacation in a week so i'm just gonna do ab workouts every day and i'm gonna get abs like please tell me if that's ever worked out for any of you who tried this like i did that when i was like 13 it never worked out like you have to be consistent in life with everything if you want it and there is no magic pill it's just consistency so start now the problem and like i'm gonna give blondes as an example people who dye their hair blonde they're going in to get the roots touched up every six weeks you know what this means your hair is growing your hair grows from your roots like if your hair grows six inches in a year that should mean that that length should be translated to ends but it's not because your hair is breaking off because you're not taking taking care of it number 15 i had some conversations with some of my friends y'all know who you are and they were like lena great hair tips blah 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 but i don't have time for that and you know what i roasted them i was like i know this might seem time consuming but it's not i literally timed my shower like yesterday and it was 25 minutes 
I feel like this is not that long. I only do the whole hair care routine shower twice a week. And like everything I do literally adds like 10 more minutes to my hair care routine. Like while you're watching a YouTube video or just like, I don't know, literally anything. It's not that hard to add. And in the long run, my hair looks better like all the time. I can count on the fact that I can just shower, blow dry it. Sometimes I don't even have to style it because I know it's healthy and it's gonna look good. About the hair damage spiral that I was talking about earlier, when my hair was super damaged, the only way it looked good was with styling. And for me, styling takes way longer than doing a four minute hair massage or just like any, literally any of the other tips I've ever said on my channel. <laughs> That's so funny, I didn't, I didn't ever think I'd have a channel. Another thing is don't get so caught up in following all the hair trends. Like I know right now, rosemary oil is like the new thing. And I'm gonna be really honest, rosemary oil is not gonna be the key to your success. I use it and I've, I've tried like all these other things and like it's fun, it's all good time, blah, blah, blah. Rosemary oil, rice vinegar or rice water, apple cider vinegar, like those are not gonna be like the magic pill that's gonna grow your hair. Think about it. People have had long hair for like ages, millennia. And like, you're trying to tell me that like this new thing, rosemary water or rosemary oil is like, that's the key. Like they didn't have it, but their hair was so long. Like that doesn't even make any sense. So don't get like so caught up and stress yourself out thinking that like you always need that new product or you have to try a new thing or add to your routine. That brings me to number 18, 18, <laughs> uh, I don't know, 17. I know I say all these things. I say all these things and they all matter. But all you really need is a good shampoo, which most of y'all don't have, but invest in a good shampoo. I can have some recommendations if you ask. You need something to condition your hair, but my tip is I don't even really use conditioners anymore. A hair mask is literally just a super heavy duty conditioner. So why wouldn't I just use a hair mask instead of a conditioner? And that just like saves time and the process and everything. That's another tip. I don't know what number that would be, but. And then also a leave-in conditioner, which do not confuse this with a regular conditioner because you need both and you can't go without both. They do different two different things and I'll explain that later. And then also you need a whole hair oil because what did we address? The roots, shampoo, um, like the rest of your hair, which is leave-in conditioner. And then your super baby dry, crusty, been on your head forever ends, which you need oil to like lock in all that moisture. And then a heat protectant, which I mentioned before. So that's one, two, three, four, five products, which you probably have way more. Now like, all, this is all you need. And I did want to mention something about leave-in conditioner. A lot of people are like, oh, I don't need it. But here's the thing. You just use conditioner, which put all this moisture in your hair. And when you get out of the shower, Hour, your hair's natural thing is like dry 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 so like all this moisture is escaping and like that work you did was for no reason so a leave-in conditioner just like locks that in and also my aunt my auntie who's amazing she did my hair and she always tells me use a leave-in conditioner if your hair okay basically what happens is that you know how your hair is longer when it's wet in the shower when you use a leave-in conditioner it locks in that moisture so your hair literally will like remain that length or like longer than like when it just completely dries and shrinks up that is kind of a magic pill if you want your hair to kind of like get a little bit longer looking right away leave-in conditioner you know when you're straightening or curling your hair and like you're holding it and there's like that smoke whatever that's not st that's not burning your hair that's literally the water leaving your hair and another one that i wanted to mention let me show you all a picture so when you put your hair you whatever you put a hand hair band don't pull this out or don't pull any hair bands out of your hair because what's happening you know when you thread your hair like all that stuff is getting caught in the thread and it's pulling out that's literally what you're doing to your hair you are threading your hair so what i do with any hair tie i ever have is like the same way you put it on take it off so i just unloop it and then boom even with tiny, like those tiny rubber bands, mostly those will snap the crap out of your hair. pH in hair care. The easiest way to explain it, I guess, is you know how people are like, um, when you're done with your shower, rinse your hair with super cold water to lock the cu or to seal the cuticle. And honestly, there were so many studies that I researched, and it's like there's not really any significance to that unless you like the feeling of freezing cold water on your head. The real thing that can se seal your cuticle um, is a low pH hair care, which like, what even is that? When I first heard that, I was like, be for real. I don't know what that is. But basically, you want all your hair care to be less than five on the pH balance. And like, that sounds so random. Like, how am I even gonna figure that out? But I'm gonna tag this creator, um, another beauty guru. <laughs> her name is Abby Young. And I basically learned like almost everything I know from her. And she talks a lot about pH balanced hair care. And like, how basically when the hair, when your hair care is super high in pH, it opens up the cuticle and like opens it up to way more damage. Like, okay, this is an example. I don't know if y'all ever use purple shampoo, but I use it and I still use it sometimes. And basically, it is super high in pH. And that is why every time you use it, your hair is so dry. It opens up the cuticle so that the color can go in there, you know? That is just not what you want in your daily hair care. And you're mainly conditioner and um, shampoo. So that was my last tip. Hope you guys learned something. Definitely comment below if any of this made sense. I hate long outros, so bye.